Hello and welcome to Model Train Fun. Today we're going to look at um, experimenting with the Central Station 3 uh, automation. We're going to look at uh, how to do uh, routes and uh, train movement. Uh, so the idea is uh, to have uh, this layout and then make actually uh, three trains uh, move around. However, we will only uh, get to uh, making one train moving uh, in this episode. Uh, which will be the freight train that just uh, parked there at the station. So in future episodes, we will look at making it more complex. Um, you might have wondered why it's been a while since I did my last uh, uh, video on automation. Um, and that's because there's actually many ways you can do the automation in the uh, central station tree. So I have been very much in doubt of what is the best way to do it, such that trains can run around uh, your layout in a safe way. Um, so that's also why this is actually not a tutorial, but it's more experiment. So I'm going to show you what I do and what are the best practices. However, in one of the future videos, I'll also talk about things I haven't quite figured out yet. Um, in order to uh, do the train automation, make, sh uh, make sure also to look at uh, three other videos that are kind of precursors to this. Uh, one is uh, looking at how to uh, do the detection using the S88 and Link S88, uh, how to make the contact tracks, and then uh, also how to uh, make uh, the uh, basic events uh, in the Central Station Tree. Um, all of those I have linked to in the description below the video. So uh, please go ahead and check that out as well for further details uh, and how to troubleshoot and so on. Enjoy the video. Let's uh, have a look at my uh, little layout that I'm going to experiment with. Uh, so uh, here we basically just got uh, one oval here and I got uh, two uh, train stations, uh, one main train station here and then a branch station uh, over here. Uh, for the setup, I got my uh, central station tree. I connected it with the uh, Link uh, S88, so I can do the detection. Uh, by the way, there's a specific video uh, on how to uh, uh, connect the detection and connect the Link 88 to the Central Station 3. I'll put a link in the description uh, below. Uh, you can see I got some wires going around for actually uh, for the contact tracks. Um, the contact tracks. Uh, I've distributed across the uh, layout such that I can detect where the trains are. So as an example, here below the um, freight train I got here, I got uh, one uh, contact track uh, here where I wanted to stop. So the central station know when it comes there, that's where I need to stop. And I got the approach here uh, to the uh, main station uh, as another contact track such that when the uh, freight train comes in from over there, it will come over here, it will get on the approach, I will lower the speed such that when I um, come here to the uh, place where I want it to stop, it will actually stop where I want it uh, to uh, stop. Um, how to uh, make contact tracks, there's also a video about that and I'll put that uh, in the uh, description below. Now uh, let's uh, take a look at the uh, layout diagram and see where I have placed all the uh, contact tracks. So uh, here I have my uh, layout. Uh, I have colored uh, the uh, tracks uh, according to where I have a place I would like to stop and a place uh, where I just wanted to uh, detect the trains. So the orange is where I would like the uh, trains to stop and the greens are where I would just like to detect the trains. So if we look down here at the bottom, that is actually uh, my main station that's going to be here. So uh, as you saw before on the layout, I have down here an orange. That's where I want uh, my uh, locomotive or my trains to stop when it enters this uh, contact section. And then I got the approach, which is the green one here. Um, in addition to that, if we continue around the loop, you see uh, when I go on the outer loop here, then I actually got uh, a green again where I would like to detect and then I got uh, a red where I would like my train to stop just before all the turnouts uh, uh, on the approach to the train station. Uh, in a similar fashion, 
if I want to go to, uh, so the, the first track here is uh, platform one of the main station. So I call this main station one. And over here, I got the uh, main station uh, platform two or main station two. Again, uh, this is a stop track or an end track. So uh, at the end, I want the uh, train to uh, stop here. And then at the approach, I want it to uh, slow down. If we look in here where we have the... Uh, um, branch station, uh, you can see I do not have any green. Uh, so here I actually chose to uh, save uh, on the uh, contact track and only have the contact track where it is I want the trains to actually stop. Uh, you could also have uh, green here going into the uh, train station so have another contact track here so when you hit this it will slow down and then stop when it reaches up here. Uh, I chose not to uh, in this setup, uh, why? Because I wanted to save the amount of wires on, on the uh, table. Uh, basically, I do temporary layout, so I don't want too many. And in addition to that, if you look here coming into the uh, branch station on this curve up here, I would assume you have to go slow anyways on this uh, uh, branch line here. So there's really no need for it. Uh, in the same fashion, uh, when I come from the branch station here, and I go out the branch line, and then I'm here out on the main line, I would like to be able to slow down and then be able to stop uh, before the uh, turnouts so that would enable me to get into the uh, main station. Um, so all in all, you have to think about where you uh, place your contact track so it makes sense. And that might actually require some trial and error. Uh, do remember to uh, look in the video for contact tracks on advice on how, how uh, to avoid uh, common mistakes and how to troubleshoot. As an example, don't make them too short uh, because then you might run into issues. So here we have the uh, track diagram on the central station tree. And you see uh, down here in the green, we got the main station where we got here uh, past uh, platform one. We got two contact tracks, uh, C1 for where I want to stop the train and C2 for the approach. In the same way, if we go to platform two, I got a C3 uh, for where I want to stop the train and a C4 for where I want to slow down on the approach. Um, as you can uh, see here, I didn't care too much about the uh, naming of uh, contact tracks. I basically just prefer it's called C and then a numbering. Uh, if you look at the turnout, you see I got a T1 over here and a T80. Uh, that's basically just the address of the turnout, so I haven't cared too much about that. And the signals I haven't cared too much about either. You see that it just says S309. And uh, by the way here, I should uh, mention um, the signals themselves actually do not exist on the layout. If you saw it uh, before, uh, when I was uh, showing the layout, there was actually no signals. And you see plenty of signals in here. Uh, so the signals don't actually need to exist on the layout for you to do automation. They just need to exist in the central station tree. So uh, I'm actually uh, taking the shortcut here. Instead of wiring up all the uh, signals, then I'm just uh, going to have the signals inside the central station tree. So there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all is I'm only using the uh, signals basically to coordinate. I'm not using them to actually stop the train actually uh, as you could think you, you would. So I'm not using the stop section for the signals. Uh, why am I not using the stop section? Because if you use the stop section that the signals can make, then uh, they will actually power off that section of the track. So when the train stops in front of the signal, it will lose power because the uh, signal has turned off the power to the track. Uh, and then there would be no sound, for example. So I don't like using uh, the stop section uh, when doing automation. Uh, you could have chosen to use the brake section in combination with the stop section such that the locomotive or train would uh, brake. Uh, before the signal, before the stop section, so it would still retain power. However, I'm not too fond of the uh, brake modules. To me, they're very expensive and uh, very uh, impractical. So that's uh, actually also one of the reasons I haven't made a tutorial uh, on these. 
Other than that, you really need to think about how you name things, uh, mostly because um, uh, you will have to uh, use the naming when you uh, create uh, some of the events. Uh, so as an example here on the uh, main station, uh, you can see uh, the platform one here. I actually call that uh, MS1 for main station one and platform two down here, I call that MS2. In a similar fashion up here in the branch station I got up here in blue, I would call the uh, the track uh, closest to the uh, station, I would call that uh, branch station one because that's platform one and the other one I will call branch station two because that's plan uh, uh, platform two. In the same fashion, I have also named uh, two significant places on the track and that's what we got up here. So basically what I got running around uh, the oval is what I call the main line. Uh, and if you go on the outer part of the oval, I consider this spot up here main line one. So this is main line one just before you go through the series of turnouts before you go into the main station to either MS1 or MS2. Uh, in the same fashion, if you come from the branch station and go out on the main line here, then I would ca call this uh, main line two, uh, which is in the same fashion before the turnouts and you go around. So I have named the points such that it makes it easier for naming events afterwards. Now, um, the philosophy for making automation uh, I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use the signals uh, to actually uh, tell the trains whether or not it's safe to move forward. So I'm going to use the signals as signals really are intended to be moved. So as an example down here, if where I have, um, you see there's a train parked here on contact track one and two. Um, and uh, when I have this train here, which is actually the freight train you saw before, you can see it's actually waiting for a signal here is 309. It's red, so it cannot move forward. So I'm going to use that as one philosophy. Then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make two groups of events. One for actually um, uh, setting the route. So uh, in this case here, where the train is at uh, C1, I would like the train to go around on the outer loop over here to uh, main line one, so ML1. In order to do that, you can see, oh, there is actually a turnout here I need to set. So I need to have a route that sets that uh, route and changes the turnout. Uh, in the same fashion, uh, I have another group of um, uh, events that actually does the train movement. I want to tell the freight train, which is parked here on C1, that it has to wait till the signal turns green when it's green, it's safe to move forward, and then it can move forward until it comes to the next signal. Uh, and if that signal is red, it has to stop. If it's green, it can continue. So in that fashion, I would like to actually divide um, my different um, uh, events and group them in this sense. Now, um, how did I make the routes? Well, um, let's uh, first uh, uh, look at uh, how we make a route for the outer loop here. So um, uh, in this video, I'm really only going to look at how to move the uh, uh, freight train around in a loop here automatically. So I wanted to go here from uh, main station one and I wanted to go on the outer loop here uh, or to a uh, main line one. Uh, and then I want it to go back into the uh, main station one here. So it'll actually uh, make a loop here. Um, how do I do that? Well, um, let's go and look at the uh, events. So we have the events here. I have grouped all my routes uh, and I have named them accordingly. So you see there's one route here called MS1 to ML1 going east. So that's basically uh, from main station one to main line one going east. So I'm down here at the main station and I wanna go around here. But notice it only goes to main line 
uh, one, it doesn't go all the way through the loop back uh, to the um, to the main station. And now, why is that? Well, if we look at it here, I would like to make my routes so they are safe and secure. So I want to make sure that I reserve the track, but I don't want to reserve too much track. So imagine I made one uh, um, route here from main station one all the way through the loop here and back to main station one. That would mean I have to reserve this stretch, this turnout, this stretch all the way around here, these two turnouts and all the way back. That means I would actually block these two turn turnouts here, for example, such that uh, trains going other directions through these two turnouts. So either from main station two to um, uh, main line two, for example, or vice versa, wouldn't be possible if I actually reserved this. So I'm going to divide it up into two routes, going here from main station one to main line one, and from main line one over to main station one. So uh, let's go back and look at the events. So I got here main station one to main line one uh, going east. So how do I make a route? Well, we have to be as safe as possible. So I have to think that into uh, when I'm making the route here. So if we um, look at what I did, the first thing I verify is can this uh, route actually be activated? Now, unfortunately, the central station tree cannot say, um, is there a freight train uh, or is there a train uh, on C1? But what it can see, say is, is there something on C1? So the first step I do in my route is actually to verify that uh, there is uh, somebody on that contact track. So you see the little question mark here. If I click on this one, oh, I need to go into edit events. Let me just go into edit events. I'm back here. Um, and I want to remove this window here. So now I can edit and now I can click on it. So if you see this one, it's set up. I want position occupied. So that's the yellow. I want the condition continue. So if I choose condition continue here, you get the little question mark. And this actually means you can only execute this event if there's somebody parked at C1, right? So I want to go this way around. I want somebody to be on C1. Now, I don't care whether or not there's somebody on C2, but there needs to be a train on C1 uh, for sure. And why is that? Well, if it's a very short train, it might not stretch into C2, right? Um, so the first part is, can I verify that it can be activated and actually stop it already if it doesn't? So this will only continue when the question mark is there, if there is a train on C1. Then the next thing I want to do is verify that the track actually is clear. So if we um, move the um, layout here a little, you can see when we come out of the train station, I want to make sure nobody is on C12 or up here on... C11. So in this case here, I will not just uh, stop the uh, uh, the route uh, selection uh, in case there's somebody on here. I would actually rather wait. So that's why you see the W. So I, uh, if you go in and look here, I've set. I want to make sure that uh, there's nobody on C12 and I will actually wait for it. So I set condition delay. When you set condition delay, it will wait there in the event until, until it is actually free. So imagine there was actually a train here on C12. Then it would actually have to move away from C12 over to let's say C11. So when C12 gets free, then I would execute this step of the event. And then the next step is to make sure that C11 is free as well. Uh, why do I want to do that? Well, because I want to make sure this entire track all the way over to mainline one over here is actually free before I actually allow the train to move forward. Now, if there was another train here on C11, whenever that moves away, then uh, we would actually continue uh, the route uh, event here. Now, now I've checked there is actually a train where I expect it to be on C1. I have verified that, uh, uh, verified and waited until the track ahead of me is clear. So now I can safely set the turnout. So in this case, it's turnout T80. 
I want to set that to straight. You see right now it's set for curved. I want to set it for straight. Um, and there's no other turnouts uh, on the route all the way over here. So when that's done, then I can safely set the signal uh, to green. Um, so in this sense, when I execute this event, it will make sure that there is actually somebody uh, waiting to get into this route. It will make sure that the track ahead is clear. It will set the turnouts and then it will turn the signal green to signal to the train it can actually move forward. Now uh, let's look at the uh, route for getting from uh, mainline 1 uh, to main station 1. Uh, so I'm up here on the layout and I want to go through these turnouts down to uh, main station platform 1 here or MS1. Uh, so the first thing I do, eh, let me just move this a little down. Uh, again, I do my route. I check whether or not C11 is actually occupied. Uh, and remember, I do that by setting a, a condition continue because I want the event to actually stop if it's not occupied. Um, then I will check whether or not somebody is at the main station. So I go down here and look. So the main station is C1, C2. I first check whether or not there's somebody in C2. And then I check if there's somebody in C1. Now, I repeat that sequence. Uh, why am I actually doing that? Well, because um, uh, this piece of track, I imagine trains could go both ways. Uh, the first piece of track here, we went past C12 and up to uh, C11 uh, at ML1. Uh, I imagine this one way, but here's two way. So imagine I first check whether or not uh, C2 is free. Actually, let me move that up. So I'm first checking if C2 is free and then I check C1 is free. However, what if there's a train that's actually parked across C1, C2, and it's actually going out of the main station here this way, so to the west and up towards uh, ML1 uh, that way. That means that, that uh, it will actually release it in a different uh, sequence than if it's going uh, the other way. So I actually just put in here just to be sure uh, double check here. I'm a little unsure whether or not this is really necessary. Also considering some of the other checks I put in. I just put it in here for now uh, to try it out because worst case it doesn't matter too much. But in this case I can actually catch whether or not uh, C2 gets free before C1 or C1 gets uh, free before C2. Right. So a little unsure if that's necessary. Um, if we scroll further down here then we see um, here, in order to uh, set the route, uh, I need to set uh, two turnouts. So in this case, I need to get from uh, ML1 up here down to MS1 uh, down here at the train station. So I need to set T5 for straight and I need to set uh, turnout T3 for curved. So I set that as well. And then I can actually set the signal up here, so S304, up here I can set that to green. And now there's a little few extra things here in this route. I'm going to talk about that uh, in the future, so this light here. Uh, so please ignore that. But it's the same as before. If we look at it, I make sure there's somebody where it's supposed to be, so on C11. I verified, although a little more complicated here, that the track is actually free. And then I actually set the route, so the turnouts, and then I set the signal here. Uh, so that's how I make the routes. Now, if we go um, out of edit mode here, and I try and execute this one here. So then we can see how it works. Let me just get this one away as well. I'm going to move this window up here. So the first thing I'm going to try is just try and execute this uh, from mainline 1 to uh, main station uh, 1. Um, so if I just hit play now, something should happen here because there's no train over here. So I try and execute it and you see it now turns red here. Uh, and you see it says stop out here so it's actually not doing anything else. 
if we go back and we look at the events here in the overview, um, so here you see now there's an exclamation sign. So this event actually got terminated because there is a problem here, exactly as uh, we would expect. Um, so let me uh, then try again. So now I'm going to pretend there's a train on C11. And remember, when you're troubleshooting and so on, you can actually just click on this one and you can actually activate it. So now there is a train there. Now be careful with this type of troubleshooting because if what uh, is you see here on the track diagram is not reflected on the real layout, on the physical layout, you can get in trouble, right? But now I'm, I'm playing along. So now this one he is, uh, is occupied. Um, and now we hit play. Um, the funny thing is this symbol here actually didn't turn back to play even though it should. But you saw I could actually hit play. And now you see I actually succeeded. You see the cursor here, the red line actually moved forward. So now I'm waiting for C2 to actually become free. Um, and you can see C2 down here, there's somebody here. So if I click on the C2, uh, again, dangerous, but good for troubleshooting. So now it becomes free. Oh, I didn't click on it here. You see the cursor move forward, and I'm waiting for C1 to become free. Um, so um, if we move it a little down here again, I'm going to um, try and display a little more here of the, uh, of the event. Let me move it just down a little more. Well, now the, uh, what I wanted to show you here is you see the turnouts are wrong, and the signal is wrong. So let me just move it up here. It's waiting for C1 to become free. Uh, so I click on the C1 and make it free here. And then you saw that the event actually executed past turning uh, the uh, turnouts. So now you see the turnouts are actually positioned correctly. So when I come from mainline one, I will actually go down to main station one. And in addition to that, you see that the, um, the signal actually has turned green so it can move forward. So in this way, I've actually now made a route that uh, first makes sure that it can be executed, then uh, make sure that the, the track is free, then what it will do, it will change the turnout, and then it will set the signals. And now here I have to be very, very careful uh, because now, the first of all, I have a partial uh, event hanging. And uh, I also have um, uh, fiddled with what's on the track. So first, I will go back into events. I'll go into control. I will terminate all events here, so I'm sure that nothing uh, is wrong. Then I'll go back here, and then I will reset uh, the things that I know is wrong. So we know there's no train over here. Um, and actually, as you see, I also put an event up such that... Um, that controls the signal, so when it gets free, it will actually turn red. I will make sure that down here you see the C4. That was actually not, that was by accident. I clicked that C2. There is actually a train. So whenever you have uh, fiddled um, and troubleshooted, always make sure to get your layout back in the correct state, both physically on the layout, but also such that the uh, the CS3 knows what is out there. So when you're troubleshooting, you may have to click on a few things uh, to get uh, back in action. In connection with the routes, uh, there's a thing we need to remember, and that's uh, resetting the signals after the train has passed. So if we, um, if we look down here at uh, main station one, if uh, the train is going towards the east, uh, then uh, whenever the uh, train leaves the station and goes past the signal, I want the signal to turn red again. Um, in the same fashion, if it's going the other way, out the west here, then uh, I want this signal over here to turn red when it actually leaves the uh, main station one. How do we accomplish this? Well, if we go and look at our events here, I'll just go into edit mode again. I choose my uh, signals group here, and you can actually see I got two events here 
related to main station one. So I got main station one east free, and I got main station one west free. So let's first look at the east free. We have it here. Um, so what we see is the only thing the event does is actually uh, set the signal to red. And it does that whenever the trains leave C1. You can see that on the icon over here. We can click on it and see how that's configured. We see it's contact C1. You can see that's, oh, uh, let me just move that a little down here. Oh, here. It's a C1, you see down here, uh, whenever it's free, so you can choose the position, um, then it will actually trigger this one. And uh, that's basically when C1 is free after it's been occupied. Um, then the signal will turn red. If we look at the other direction, so we look at MS1 West free, um, this one actually also triggers on C1. So this one, whenever C1 is uh, free, then actually over here, uh, this signal over here would turn red as well. Um, you could ask, why didn't I use C2? Well, that's actually because if you look at what I got here on the diagram, that's actually not accurate. Um, in truth, C1 is approximately here where it's shown on the layout. However, C2 actually stretches all the way from uh, C1 here and all the way up to the uh, turnout down here. So I could wait till actually C2 leaves up here uh, before I turn it red, but I have chosen to that we always know that the train will stop on C1. Remember, that was my orange uh, contact track uh, when I designed my layout. So this is where it will always be occupied because that's where it stops. So basically, I'm considering it, it um, um, uh, free, so to speak, when it leaves C1. Or I shouldn't say I do not consider main station 1 free. I just consider then for sure I need to set the signal. So this is actually like the prototype of the real life. As soon as the uh, train uh, starts passing the signal, it may actually uh, turn red there because you want to make sure that the trailing train uh, doesn't uh, catch up with it. Now, uh, the uh, uh, final one uh, for the route we are looking at uh, today that has, oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, um, the signal that's controlled is the one up here. So that's, uh, it's hard to read, but it actually says, S304. If we go and look on the event for that one, so that's this one over here, mainline one free. If we look at that one, basically what it says, I'm going to move this a little down again. It says, if I'm if C11 was occupied and it gets free, so you see the locomotive is on the other side of the contact here, it says C11. We can go in and check. It says contact C11. When the position turns free, then we want to trigger. Then it will trigger and then turn this signal red. In the same fashion, I've done that for the other signals on the layout. Now let's uh, look at the event uh, for the train movement. Um, so um, remember, you can uh, group uh, everything. So these were the routes. I also made uh, a group here for the freight train. So uh, let's uh, look at uh, how uh, the freight train uh, event actually looks. Uh, let me go in into edit mode because we'll probably want to edit something. All right. So here I have the um, freight train event uh, going from MS1. So MS1, uh, so main station one to main station one over main line one. So it will go from main station one over main line one back to main station one and it's going east. So it's going east out of the station here. Notice how uh, meticulous I am about the naming because you could also imagine going out from uh, main station one going past uh, main line two and back to main station one. Or you could even uh, imagine going from uh, main station uh, uh, one or main line one 
and uh, uh, so the other way out of the station and then going this way around the loop right so i i've actually tried to um, uh, make it uh, as little confusing as possible by doing the naming um, and why is that by the way uh, because if you look at the events here if i go to um, to all events you see there's lots of events here don't forget you can change page down here so you got many events uh, and by the way, these are only the events for controlling my tree trains on this little layout. All right. Um, so uh, the uh, train movement <coughs> event. Uh, remember the uh, central station tree train movements uh, or events uh, that has to do with locomotives. So setting speed and so on are specific to the locomotive. So unfortunately, we cannot create a generic one to move from MS1 to MS1 uh, or from main station one to main station one. I cannot do that. I have to create one for each train that can actually drive uh, that uh, piece of the track. Um, and that's also why I kind of separate it out into uh, routes and into train movements. Uh, because when I do that, then I at least can reuse the routes and the setting of the signals. Uh, however, it still becomes cumbersome when I have to have two trains drive the same. I have to actually make those two uh, events the same. So this is the one for the freight train. Um, and if you notice here, the name is freight. It's hard to see up on that label there. Okay. Let me just... Uh, Close this one behind, okay. So in the same fashion as the route, the first thing I wanna make sure is I can only execute this if there's something on the C1. So uh, C1 is, is uh, at the main station down here. I wanna make sure that there is actually a train there. Unfortunately, the central station tree cannot tell me that it's actually my freight train. Uh, or my Danish beer train in this case, it just can tell us whether or not it's occupied. But I still put this in. I do it the same way as before. I set condition continue such that it will actually terminate if it's not there. Uh, ignore the first piece here. I will show that uh, later on. Uh, then um, when I'm sure there's something there, then I will actually set the route. And you see the route here is route MS1 to ML1. So I will actually set the route and then I will turn the signal green and then I can start my train. Um, now here's a couple of tips for you. Uh, when you are in uh, looking at an event, if you long press on a sub event, you can see it actually pops up uh, down here. Um, and then you can actually see how the sub events looks. Um, another thing, if I just go in and I create an event here, so this is just a random event, FS32, I can look at the event list and then I could go and find my routes. Let me see where's my routes. I have to scroll over to find my routes. So here's a route. I can basically just take that and drag it in and then it becomes a sub event such that when this event executes, it will actually go in and execute this event as well. And again, here in the window, I can long press and then you see the sub event in here. All right. So we have to go back to my freight train. I was here. I'm just going to move that up. So here's my freight going from MS1 to MS1. So first I make sure that there is actually a train on C1. Then... I actually execute my route. Oh, oops. Um, you have to long press in order to show it. And then you can actually see it here. And that's exactly what we had before. First, I check there's something in C1. I make sure the track ahead is okay. I turn the turnout and then I set it to, to green. Now, um, one interesting thing here is when I have this uh, event here, it will actually execute the event. And when it actually uh, comes here, it will start a new execution that will run in parallel with. Uh, so that will actually run in parallel with and set the, set the um, signal. Uh, that's why you see here, I actually, in this event up here, wait for the signal to turn green. Um, so you could choose not to make it run in parallel with, uh, but the way I do the automation, it's needed. And you'll see that in the next videos, why. 
how do I make sure that it doesn't wait for this uh, sub event to uh, to finish? If you click on this one here, you see the window pops up. It says delay here. There's a tick box here. If I tick that one here and hit OK, you see it says wait. So we'll actually wait for the route to finish. You could have done it like that and then you actually don't need the, the signal here. Uh, however, I prefer not to wait for it, so it will be executed concurrently or in parallel with, and that means I will put into my uh, freight here a wait for the green signal. And how was it I waited for the green signal? Well, uh, I go in, I make sure the position is green for the signal, I set condition delay, and then it will actually wait, and then you get the nice W up here. So what will happen? First verify that the train is on C1, then I will execute uh, the route. Or you could also, I, I um, like more to think of it as request this route. Because you will request it and then it will give you this route and turn it green when it's ready, but not before, right? And then you have the uh, route setting down here where it makes sure that the track is free and it set the turnouts and then it set the signal. Uh, by the way, don't forget you want to set the turnouts before the signal because you want to make sure all turnouts are set correctly before green. Because when you see up here with the with the freight, um, oh sorry, I'll scroll a little forward. When it's green, after that, I will actually set the speed uh, of the locomotive. Um, and by the way, don't forget there's a trick to actually dragging this uh, into the event list here. Don't forget to look the video at the video of basic events, how you make events, how you drag and drop and so on. Right? I will put a link in the description uh, below. So when the signal is green, then I will actually... So let me just move, remove that again. You see I long press that and then... Uh, it uh, disappeared from down here the sub event because then we can oops then we can move this a little down so can I move it down yes here yeah, so I bet I can see it um, so then I wanted to then I set the train for speed 60 so I'm going a little slow out of the train station and uh, then I wait till I'm at C12. So basically what I want to do is I want to accelerate uh, when the uh, train is out of the train station and I base just use the C12. So whenever it hits C12, I want to set the speed to 80. So in this case, first green, speed 60. Then I wait till uh, the train arrives uh, at C12. You see it's yellow and it's a W. And then I set speed 80. Um, don't uh, think about what the I here does. It's again something I'll talk about in a future video. Now we are at top speed here in uh, C12. So what's the next thing I want to do? Let me just scroll a little forward here. I want to wait till it hits C11 and then I actually want it to stop. <clears throat> uh, because I want to make sure that the route has been requested and I have a green signal uh, before I continue. So I stop here. Then I actually uh, request the other route. So that's the route ML1 to MS1. I request that route. And we can long press here. And then we can see everything we saw before. Where it actually verifies whether or not there's somebody at the train station. Which is C1, C2 down here. And uh, it will set... Uh, the turn us correctly and then it will set the green signal. Okay, so I request the route again here when I'm at main line one and then I wait for that signal. Now you see it's a oops. You see here it's a different signal. It's actually signal 304. Well, it's difficult to see, but it's signal 304. I wait till that turns green. Then I set the speed to 80. Um, and then the train will accelerate when it comes past the two turnouts and it comes to the approach, so the C2. So I wait till it comes to C2. Then I want to slow the train down. And then when it reaches C1, I actually want to stop the train. So this is an example of uh, the train movement. And what is important here is that a train movement event 
in the same fashion as the route event, always start by double checking. Is there actually somebody there where I uh, believe it would be? Then I would actually uh, request my route. I would wait for the signal to turn green. Then I will do my drive movement. So in this case, I would move forward uh, at speed 60. I might vary the speed uh, as I come across the track. And then I will actually stop when I come to a signal. Then I might uh, request another route. In this case, I do because the first route was from main station one. So down here up to ML1. And then the next route is from ML1. So main line one to main station one. I wait for another signal. Uh, and then I drive in and then I stop. So that's basically my entire loop uh, in one train movement event. So um, what other events have I made for the freight train? Well, <clears throat> we just saw the, um, the one for uh, moving the train around the loop, but there's more I would like to do with the freight train. So I typically make a freight run uh, um, event. So that's actually for everything I want to do with it, because maybe I want to do more than just run around in a loop. Although that's the only thing I want to do for now. So if we um, look at the, the freight run event, I'm just going to remove what is behind it. Um, the first thing I want to do is, uh, well, whenever you make um, an event, a train movement event, you have to start. So you turn on your central station tree, you have to start. So you have to know where your train is. That's where I call the home point. So there needs to be a home point for the uh, freight train. And that's where my run event would start from. The home point for the freight train is actually here at main station one. So whenever I hit freight run, I make sure that there is actually something there. I hope that it's actually uh, the freight train. But uh, in truth, you don't know it could be another train and then everything gets screwy. So it's very, very important when you're doing automation with the central station tree to you have to make sure that it's actually the correct train at the correct spot. All right. So I first check that and I use the uh, I use the condition continue, which will terminate the event if that's not the case. Then I want to make sure that the um, Train actually has the uh, correct direction. Um, and yes, so that's the correct direction. Then I want to turn on the engine sound. You see, I put in a delay here uh, because remember, it takes some time for the engine sound actually to spin up and make the train ready and so on. It actually takes more than two seconds. My typical rule of thumb is eight to 10 seconds of delay after you turn the engine sound on till it's actually uh, uh, fully started. But again, it depends on your locomotive. So you have to uh, adjust that to your locomotive. First, I wait um, two seconds. So it will actually start starting up. Then I will actually turn on the light. Um, and then you see that's another delay here of two seconds. So after two seconds after the engine starts, the light will turn on. After another two seconds, it will continue. And what it will do here is this is actually the function value for turning on the rear light of uh, the locomotive on, off. Uh, so remember, the locomotive has some cars behind it, so you don't need the red lights on the rear of the train to actually be on. And uh, in this locomotive, for this decoder, you have to turn this particular uh, function on in order to do that. And then you see it waits uh, six seconds. Uh, so what does that mean? Well, first I turn on engine sound, wait two seconds, turn on light, wait two seconds, and then uh, I make sure that the light at the rear is turned off and wait six seconds. So that's a total of 10 seconds before I uh, continue uh, in the loop or in the, um, in the event. Now, the uh, next part is I would actually like the uh, train to continually running around on the oval on the track. In order to do that, I make a loop. So I long press here and I see uh, what it is. Uh, the only thing the loop actually does is it runs the freight 
um, train movements event from MS1 to MS1. So the one we just looked at before, so if I long press that, you see that's actually what's going on down here. And don't forget, I can uh, look at the sub events down here. So my run event basically just does a loop, and the loop basically just executes the MS1 to MS1. Um, one thing I've done in the loop here is I've set in a delay at 20 seconds. Um, and notice here I set in specifically a delay for the route here. So remember before when I was in the freight movement event or train movement event down here, if you look down here, I did not set a delay. I did it explicitly up here in the loop because I don't want the loop to continuously run um, and spawn uh, the uh, train movement events. Um, there's two reasons for that. One is I want to make sure that the train actually has made it all the way around the oval and is back to the spot where it's expected to be. The other thing is also you have to be careful with loops. If you execute something very, very fast, you can actually make the uh, CS3 go in an infinite loop and steal all the CPU cycles such that it can't do anything. So it's very important when you make a loop that you actually can uh, make sure that it takes time inside the loop. So in this case, the train would run around in the oval and then it would, we wait here till it has uh, done that entire thing and then we wait 20 seconds. So what does that mean? It means the freight train will run from MS1, main station one to main line one, back to main station one, wait 20 seconds, and then it will do it one more time. Um, I have not shown in a previous video how to uh, make a loop uh, macro. If I just uh, make a quick event here, so I'm just going to make one here, so it's FS33. You can actually uh, just hit uh, add up here, and then you can see here comes uh, different uh, macros, and the uh, loop one is here where it says macro loop, and you see now it actually makes one. It called it actually loop one. Now, if you have to go out and find it, uh, you see it actually, uh, when I created the event, it made my FS33 here. Macros are always at the end in this list. So this list is sorted however you want. You see I sort it by name, but macros are always at the end, so I can go to the end. And here at the end, you can see my loop one. And here, if I got my loop one, um, you can... Uh, Oops. You can go and find the freight one, and here you have the freight one here going from MS1 to MS1 or ML1, and you can drag that down, and now you have the loop. And now you have to remember to set in the delay, and preferably always set a delay of at least one second uh, between uh, execution of loops, just to make sure that it always does that. Like if you are on lucky to only set the uh, set uh, put routes in here then it will continuously try and do this uh, then it's good with a delay to break it out now uh, let's uh, try and execute the event and uh, see if we can see uh, what actually happens so um, we have here the uh, fright run event uh, as you can see i already expanded all parts here uh, so the run, the loop, uh, the uh, actually uh, movement of the freight train from um, uh, main station one to main station one or main line one, and then uh, the first route it's gonna set. Um, do remember in order uh, to uh, start an event, so if you cannot play it up here, then uh, then you might be in uh, editing mode and then you cannot start it. Uh, you see there's uh, four cursors here, one for each uh, event. Um, so actually uh, what I'll do is I'll do a little trick here. So I will unclick uh, C1 here so we can see uh, what happens. Um, so when I start the event, you'll actually see, oh, I cannot move any further. That's the same as with the route. Okay, I will click that one on again. I will 
uh, actually uh, try it again. And notice here, I consider it a bug. It still says stop out here, but the next thing I want to do is actually uh, be able to hit play. But if I hit it again, it will actually play. And then you can see it's starting up the train. It's turning on the light. Um, you can hear the sound from the locomotive. It's uh, waiting the 10 seconds. And now you can see it's down here to uh, actually uh, uh, execute uh, the freight movement. Uh, by the way, this is why I have a continue here, so I can actually uh, stop it. I will actually click on this one, and you can see it continues. It set the route. The train uh, starts moving. And you can see it moves around. It just went faster. And now it hits C11. It requests that route, waiting for a green. Continues with full speed. Slows down. And then uh, now it's back at uh, MS1, and here it stopped. And now this has actually been executed. Uh, the, uh, the, the, um, the third line here has been executed, so now we're back in the loop. You see it's actually hanging here after the loop. It's waiting 20 seconds, uh, and then it will actually uh, execute it again. And you see it did that there. And now it drives again at speed 60 until it hits C12, then it goes 80. Now it waits for C11. And here it stops, it requests the route. It immediately got a green, so it continues with speed 80. It goes slower on the approach. And then we are almost back at the station and we're there now. And that is actually how the event goes. I will now terminate the events. And we uh, succeeded in making uh, the little uh, freight train, uh, my Danish beer train, uh, run around in a loop. Um, actually, it wasn't that difficult. However, there's many things you need to think about in order to make sure that your automation is safe, right? You really don't want the trains to collide. So that's why we put a lot of effort into uh, making some routes that uh, verified as much as we can that uh, it, there is somebody there where we're starting the route, uh, that the, the uh, track ahead is clear or the block is clear uh, before we actually uh, shift the turnout, setting the route and actually uh, turning the signal green. Um, the uh, idea is, um, or maybe I should uh, turn it around and say, the challenge is the central station tree cannot tell us where uh, which train is. So it cannot tell us, okay, right now uh, the uh, freight train is parked in uh, front of the station and it's leaving. You have to kind of uh, build everything around uh, those assumptions. Um, so we looked at the um, uh, setting the route or the route events and the signals and using the signals to control the train movement events. Um, all in all, I'll have to say, when you're making uh, automation, be very patient. It takes a lot of time and a lot of troubleshooting, but it's, it's very rewarding when it finally works, even when it's just something uh, running around in a small circle like this. Uh, one tip I would give you is try and always make things in small bites. Uh, maybe you start first by making the train movement uh, event where you actually see the train start from the train station and actually just move to the first block uh, and set the speed there. And then you can manually take over, reset everything and then see if everything works. Uh, because many things can go wrong. For example, maybe you don't get a good detection on the contact track so the train forgets to stop. Uh, because it's not detected. Uh, the wheels could be dirty. Uh, you could have goofed up the event uh, and so on. So try and build things in, in small pieces. Uh, try it out. And then I'll have to say test, test, test and test again. Uh, there's a lot of testing involved in, in train automation. Um, always start with uh, one train, make sure it works. When you introduce a new train, don't have the other trains running. Then make that train work as you want it to, and then try combining it and so on. So there's a lot of troubleshooting here. 
If you like this video, uh, please give it a like and a, and a thumbs up. Uh, if you um, enjoyed it uh, and enjoy this channel, please go ahead and subscribe as well. Click the little uh, notification bell uh, such that you will be uh, notified about upcoming videos. So I hope to see you in the next video. Enjoy!